Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today I wanted to go over a most recent issue, just kind of story time with Dave because a lot of people have been trying to keep up with what's been going on in my life as far as like people that actually, you know, I consider friends in the 1320 communities, the auto legends communities, just friends in general. So I figured I would make a video because it's so much easier to just link people this crap <laughs> than it is to try to post it everywhere and keep everybody informed. So let's make a video. So I came across this video. What's the biggest scam in the auto repair industry? And what he talks about is basically you get a check engine light, you take it to the mechanic, they plug it in, they scan it, and they say, oh, you need this, this, and this. And then they replace it. But then you pick up your car and maybe a week later the check engine light for the same thing or something else comes back. So you take it in again and they tell you, oh, well, you definitely needed those, but you also need this is what your car is telling you now. It's kind of a chain reaction. Sometimes if you fix this, then this will show that it actually has a problem because of a prior problem with the thing we replaced last week. I have never heard something so true, and it hurts. It hurts. It's so true. This is why I'm a big supporter of what's called right to repair. I don't understand how these companies can put these security measures in place. I can understand with like massive machinery, but if you're certified to work on the stuff, what's it matter? Like I'm certified... Well, I'm not certified, but like I have 15 years experience pulling apart cell phones, computers, tablets, you name it. You put it in front of me. If it's an electronic device, I can either recover your data from it or I can fix the broken screen, the broken back glass, replace your battery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I may not be certified. There's not a certification for that so much as there is just like general understanding and experience, but like Apple will serialize the screen, the battery, the front cameras. Like if you replace um, the battery in an iPhone and it's not a certified battery that you actually take it to Apple and they re-serialize it to the phone, unless you can jailbreak that phone, there is no way for you to change the serial and it'll always tell you the battery is not genuine. Even if you have two iPhone 15s next to each other, take one battery from one iPhone 15 Put it in the other one, it'll tell you the battery is not genuine or it's not the original battery from factory. Cars are starting to get to be the same way, which is why I don't really want brand new cars. I enjoy my old cars. So let's get into what's my experience been over the last little while. So we're going to start with the fact that I have owned a lot of cars in the last couple of years. And it's all because of being screwed over by local mechanics. I don't know who I can trust anymore. Um, you know, I started out a couple years ago. It was, I think, 2017 when I got this Golf R. And fantastic car. I never had to sell this. And we'll get into why I could have kept this car to this day. I sold this car because I was having trouble with another car. And I needed something I could daily drive every day. So when I sold this car, I already had the Fiat 500 Abarth. The Fiat 500 is a fantastic car. I love the thing. It's so much fun. But because of that car having issues and having to take it to the mechanic and it was my daily driver, I had to sell this. Because of this having problems with a couple sensors that I had to replace them every like four to six months, for some odd reason it would just kill these sensors and then the problems would go away if I replaced them, I sold this car. I could have kept it. So, when I sold this, I got this as part of a trade plus cash. This is my 1992 Honda Prelude that was garage kept, barely ever saw winter, was very clean underneath, no rust. Um, was not originally an Ohio car even, and had less than 65,000 miles on it when I got it. I got this car plus four grand cash 
So kind of technically I sold the golf for 10,000 quote unquote. I took this and cash for the golf. I never had to do that. I never had to sell this car either. So I traded this car for, I know terrible picture. It's the only one I can find. I had this really nice near mint Dodge Dakota that was a little bit rusty, but it only had 60,000 miles on it. I never had to sell that, but I did. And then I've had this for a really long time as well. It's a whole nother story, but we get to the story of the Fiat 500. Yes, this is a PT Cruiser with twin turbos in the background behind it. <laughs> That thing was gnarly, but ADHD aside, this is my Fiat 500 Abarth that is tuned by Torque Motorsports for 93 octane with 24 peak PSI boost on stock catalytic converter with an aftermarket intake and coil packs. That's basically all that's done to this car. I never had to sell that Golf. I sold the Golf to fix this. I sold the Prelude to fix this. I sold the truck to fix this. None of those fixes ever had to happen. They were all simply just me being naive, kind of playing with the car myself. I ended up fixing a couple things, but the major hurdle that was stopping the car from being driven was something that no mechanic in my area, I'd taken it to three mechanics, no mechanic in my area ever caught. Catalytic converter was clogged. No one ever checked it. No one ever inspected the exhaust to see if the catalytic converter was the problem. A year of ownership of this car, I never got to drive. I drove it around the corner, and that would be problems. A couple days ago, well, about, so let's, story time. I don't have a picture of it. I have a 2014 Chevy Sonic RS. It needs an engine swap or the cylinder head and head gasket replaced. Either way, $4,000 I don't plan on spending on a car I only got two and a half, three months ago in December of 2023. I'm in contact with the car lot, but because of that, I have missed seven, eight days of work because my girlfriend, we have three kids. Um, two of them have to go to different therapists multiple times a week. My one son goes to speech therapy. Uh, the other one has to go to... Um, I don't remember what kind of therapy it is, but it's he's basically not lifting up his head and doing this stuff and like developing the way that he's supposed to. So they're a little worried. So he has to go to therapy for that stuff. He's only like five months old. I think they're a little overzealous with this stuff, but I'm not a doctor. So my girlfriend can't take me to work and my dad can't take me to work either because my mother has dementia, unfortunately, and she just basically has to have somebody always there. So Plus, they're both in their 80s. Anybody with 80-year-old grandparents or parents knows that it's basically just doctor trips all the time. <laughs> it's really unfortunate that once you retire, all you do is live with your doctor. Um, so my dad can't give me rides to work. And for me, work is about 27 miles away. So there and back would be nearly $100 a day with Uber. I haven't looked at Lyft. I could have, I guess. That makes sense. But I didn't have rental on my auto insurance, so that's my fault. So I guess I could have tried to do that and get that set up and try to get a rental while I was down and out of a car. But even then, a rental wouldn't cover seven days. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. That sneeze sucked. Anyway, um, anybody that knows me in person, I sneeze like a freaking banshee, and it hurts every time. Um... <laughs> So the Chevy Sonic needs all this work. The car lot is in contact with me, but the owner of it who needs to do the stuff to take care of me is out of town with family issues because of a family member being deathly sick. I'm not here to try to rush him in a time of sadness for, you know, with his family. That's not right. That's not something I'm here to do. That would be very mean and it would be bad karma. And it probably wouldn't help me in the long run anyway. Um, so why am I slightly angry? Well, this 2013 Fiat 500, like I said, 
spent a year in my garage, me tinkering with it, taking it apart, putting it back together as far as I was comfortable. I finally went a little bit out of my comfort zone and I took the downpipe with the catalytic converter off the car. I don't know how to inspect a catalytic converter. Anybody that told me how to inspect a catalytic converter said, you have to do it while it's on the car, you idiot. And I went, oh, I have made a grave mistake. And once I realized I was kind of angry about it and no one was willing to help me with this thing, um, I just took a hammer and a screwdriver. And I guess now I'm admitting to def- uh, a, a crime. I gutted the catalytic converter. It is a straight metal pipe all the way through this car. There is no muffler on these cars from factory. This thing is straight piped all the way turbo back. Straight piped. When I was taking the stuff out of the catalytic converter, there was a bunch of stuff that looked like cotton coming out of it. I don't know what's in a, inside a catalytic converter, so I don't know if that was sound dampening and then stuff on top of that. Um, either way, catalytic converter is completely gutted. I then put everything back together and took it for a drive. It didn't shudder. It didn't backfire. It didn't misfire. It didn't act a little funny. I have driven this thing now 50 miles with a straight pipe cat. No cat on the car. It's astounding that that's all it was, and nobody figured that out in the last year with the three different mechanics I took it to? You've got to be kidding me. I replaced pointless sensors. I replaced upstream O2, downstream O2, map sensor, uh, some other sensor. I was about to do the throttle position sensor on the throttle body, which you can't do just the sensor. You have to buy a whole throttle body on this car. So it's fixed. I have it at a mechanic right now, and in the state of Ohio, at least where I live, I ended up finding out that nobody's really willing to work on the car still. And now they're not willing to work on the car because it doesn't have a catalytic converter, and due to regulations with the EPA, they're not willing to really mess with the car at all at a mechanic shop, and technically by law... They aren't even allowed to give it back to me until I put one on it. But they're kind of being nice because they know the situation I'm in. I have a catalytic converter downpipe on order. It's a race cat. Nobody needs to know that. But at least I'm moving forward. I will finally be able to go back to work. But the whole point of this video is because of me trusting mechanics, this car was down and out. And I sold probably the coolest car and best car I ever owned. I sold this to fix that because this was having so many problems. I have caused so much, so many headaches and agony and problems and have spent so much money because of mechanics trying to tell me it was some sensors or some different parts that were not the problem. It was always just a catalytic converter. You want to know? What ended up actually, you know, clearing my mind and making me realize, oh, maybe I should just check the exhaust. Hold on a second. I was talking to a friend on Facebook. His name is Elliot. We met a long time ago because he wanted to make a PC-based drag racing game. He works on some of the coolest classic cars I've ever seen. I was talking to him about past cars I've had and just all the bad luck I've ever had when it comes to cars. And I started talking about a 1999 Hyundai Tiburon that I owned. This Hyundai Tiburon, um, the day my dad had his heart attack, I was trying to drive to the hospital from, I'm not going to say cities specifically, from, I'll say major cities, not direct cities, but like basically North Olmstead to Cleveland is where I had to drive. The car was starting to accelerate very slowly, get very lethargic and just no throttle response and I had to turn around and limp at home while my dad was in the hospital having a heart attack like I didn't know if I could lose him right then and there I took it to a mechanic that was a family mechanic that was willing to work on the car they took the exhaust off and the catalytic converter was just gone it was just done it was a 99 Tiburon and I think this was 20 years later 
after it had originally left the car lot. And when I was explaining that to Elliot, I went, I, I had this, you know, Jimmy Neutron brain blast. I was like, that's the same shit this thing is doing. It's lethargic. It'll misfire and feels like there's a ton of back pressure. And it has problems. So I gutted the cat. Like I said, multiple years of headaches with vehicles could have been avoided. If a trusted mechanic and just run me for my money and just checked the exhaust. That was the problem the whole time. Find a trusted mechanic or learn to do it yourself. Please, for the love of God. I don't want to see anybody else go through the headache and pain that I've gone through simply because I could walk into work tomorrow after missing eight days of work because of car trouble after I drive this to work when my boss was under the impression that this thing's fucking totaled. And he could fire me on the spot. I don't even know. Because I've missed eight days of work because of not having a car until I finally just personally just hated the existence of not having something to drive that I jumped out of my comfort zone and took the exhaust off, gutted a cat, put it back on, and a car that sat for a year was finally drivable. Please, learn to fix things yourself or find somebody who is actually a good mechanic that's not a chain. Seriously, please, learn to do some of this stuff yourself. Some of the stuff is so easy. Get a scan tool. You don't even need to spend much. You can download Torque Pro on Android or iOS and get a simple little Bluetooth dongle that plugs into your OBD. That'll do your scanning for your check engine codes. Throw those codes into Google. They will give you an idea of where to start. If that still doesn't help you, reach out to a friend that's a car mechanic or something like that that's like a family friend or a family member that maybe knows a little bit more about cars. They can try to hopefully point you in the right direction. It took me talking to a friend who lives states away in, I think, Chicago. Well, that's a city, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and finding out, oh my God, just running my thought process and realizing it's the same problem I was having years ago with a different car. I'm just going to try this. Please learn this stuff yourself. I'll talk to you guys later. I know there's not much to look at in this video except some photos and things like that, but this is a really passionate subject for me because I'm really angry right now and I needed to get my frustrations out. Just do yourself a favor and at least get some basic education on the automotive spectrum, I guess. I guess spectrum is not the right word for this, but <laughs> spectrum is what I'm on. Um, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.